Excellent. Can I just ask, can, can everybody hear me? Oh, okay. I can hear you, yeah. Are you having trouble, Alexis? Not anymore, thank you. Okay, <laughs> okay, good. All right, so I am going to call to order the Thursday, February 3rd meeting of the African Heritage Reparation Assembly. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Can I just have a time, please? Yes, uh, 634. And I think it's a good practice to make sure that we can all be heard. Um, so let's just, um, I'll call your name, unmute and just say that you're here and we'll make sure that we can hear you. So let's start with you, Alexis. Read present. Great. Uh, Dr. Shabazz, we'll, we'll come back to him. Um, Hala? Lord present. Excellent. Um, and Irv? Irv is here. Great. Jennifer, I, I, we heard, we could hear you. You're good. <laughs> um, and Dr. Shabazz is, looks like he's in the middle of something. So we'll come back to him. All right. So we have a packed agenda tonight. Um, and so we're going to do our best to get through as much of it as we can. Um, did, did anyone hear from Yvonne? Okay. All right. So let's just I'm gonna just go ahead and pull it up. So if we just want to take a moment to um, reflect quickly on our, our meeting etiquette, um, the ropes. It feels like a long time ago now that we <laughs> that we first saw the ropes. And I think. I'm so let's see here, actually. Do you I, want to open up for public comment first? Yes, I absolutely do. Thank you. Yes. So we're going to open up for our first public comment period. Um, and so since we do have some attendees, I'm going to go ahead and read the public comment statement. During the public comment period, one of the co-chairs will recognize members of the public when called on and there's no co-chairs. The chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and uh, I, I, uh, we, we were going to take that out. So pr pronouns and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The HRA will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. So if you'd like to make a public comment, uh, please use the raise hand function and I will unmute you. All right, seeing none, uh, we can go ahead and move into our agenda. And Jennifer, we don't have any minutes to approve tonight. Is that right? No. Okay. Great. All right. So between, since the last time we met, there has been sort of a lot of things happening, different meetings that have occurred. Um, and some of what we have on the agenda tonight is um, very connected. So I think what I want to do is start with an update on the Black Census and the harm report. And we can, I'll explain a little bit more about what has happened since we, we last met. So the Donahue Institute, as you know, has uh, given us a scope of work um, for, to produce geographic data. Um, and in reviewing that scope of work, 
with Dr. Shabazz and Mattia Kramer, who is going to help us to develop the harm report, we recognize that there might be an opportunity to expand the scope of the work to not only include the geographic information, but to also include demographic information that would help us with our disparity um, piece of things. So we had a meeting um, with the Dunahue Institute and with town manager Bockelman um, in which we talked about the possibility of expanding the scope of work and what that might look like and what they can and can't do. And the outcome of that meeting was that the, that this body should decide what it is we want, as, as Irv said, a final product, um, and then come back to Paul and come back to the Dunahue Institute and ask for them to rework the proposal and the scope of work. Um, they did send us some really interesting, um, uh, some really interesting imagery visualization that I'd like to bring up. I'm going to share the screen, but before I do that, I want to check in with Irv and Dr. Shabazz um, because they were both involved in those conversations to see if I've missed anything or if if something should be added before I go ahead and pull that up. Or I, I, I think that, you know, that that which was shared uh, today that you have, uh, that that was similar to what I had shared before that they had presented in uh, uh, a, a couple of meetings with them. Uh, anyway, the, the, the bottom line is for us is to decide what product we want to end up with and where that product is going to take us. It was a great meeting. That They're a really skillful group and they definitely can deliver on the kinds of things that we need. The other thing is that um, in terms of the budget, just want to remind people that we were at around 65 to $6,900 in the original budget for this, the Black Census. And this, um, is is almost where we are right now. The present proposal, I think, is around 3,500. But anyway, uh, in other words, there is room to move on 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 expanding this if we so desire. Yeah. So I just I'm going to bring these up really quick, and I think Irv is correct that he shared these with us in an email, but. For me to see them on the screen today in the meeting was really impactful. Um, and so let me just see what I can do here. Um, here we go. <clears throat> All right. Uh, okay. It's really neat. And Irv, I'll ask you or Dr. Shabazz, I think Irv, you've already seen this, so maybe it would be best you could talk about this. So sort of the broadest way that we can, um, that we can look at this is by tracks. Um, and I'm just about to share my screen here. I have it pulled up now. Can you all see that? Great. Um, so, Irv, do you want to just sort of describe what it is that I'm showing here? Right. I mean, these are census tracts. Now, these are the smallest level of detail uh, that is available uh, to get uh, meaning out of the numbers are the census blocks. And, 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 and you will see those come up. Uh, embedded in all of this data, uh, when I when was first asked, well, uh, where are black people or those who identify as blacks? Where are they living? So the cut, first cut of that data that they provided um, took it down to the block level. This is the block level. That was a block group that I just had up. And as Irv says, this is the most narrowly defined that they right. can. Uh, right. and, and, and I think that you know, what I should do is send back out that uh, information again, because 
they gave some initial indications of where uh, people identify as Blacks live in Amherst, according to these census blocks. And those are interesting to see because uh, they are illuminating in a lot of different ways. Uh, the second thing is that the information uh, is, will behoove all of us to look at all of the 2020 uh, uh, information uh, census in Amherst uh, in terms of the broad strokes. One broad stroke that comes out is that the white population has declined over the last 10 years and that the minority, the BIPOC population has increased. And th there are some interesting questions that, that can be asked. One is, where do those white people go? Two is, where are all these BIPOC people living? Three is, where are all these, uh, all, the, all of the people who, identi who identify as uh, Black African-Americans, where do they live? And there are 2,900 of us. And the other good thing, the question to, not a question, just to ponder is, that uh, Black people in Amherst are a minority of a minority. Yeah. Yeah, and um, I think what's important to know about the what we just displayed there is in terms of geographic data, we can go down right to the block level. But in terms of the, the, the demographic data, they can't really get below the track level. So um, that sort of, so, so what we need to decide as a group is do we want our finished product um, to include both the geographic data, um, including visualizations, and demographic data that could help us look at disparities in income and in housing in these various um, areas. And Mattia, who's gonna help us uh, with the research really feels that would be invaluable to be able to get that information. Um, and I don't have, actually, I do have my notes. Um, so the American Community Survey, um, and Irv, do you know a little bit more about, would you just say just quickly what that piece I mean, is? It's, it's really interesting because you can, um, in, in some instances, you can take uh, the American Community Survey data uh, and um, correlate it or try to triangulate it with uh, the census to get some uh, graphic display. But the American Community Survey is, is done five, three, and two years, I think those are it. So the five-year one is what, what, what we would be able to look, uh, would be looking for. That is really valuable information because we cannot get that kind of information strictly from the geographic and demographic information of the census. And so, yes, in terms of my view, we really need to have both because both of those will give us uh, a really, really good a picture of African-Americans and uh, Amherst. Yeah. And I, I got the sense from um, Paul today that he was supportive of our, um, of our of this work and what, what we're trying to accomplish. And he is the one who suggested that we come back to the drawing board and really decide on what we want. Um, and I think I even heard him say that <laughs> he'd worked out in the budget. Um, and I did do a little research after that meeting and found that there is money available out there in the form of grants for folks who are working on um, collecting racial data because it's, it's, it's such a difficult, it's such a challenge. Um, and so there are organizations that, and I've already gone ahead and just inquired with one Massachusetts organization um, who has money available for, for folks that are doing this kind of work. So let's just open it up for any comments, questions, just open discussion. How do we want to see this move? And go, Irv, please go ahead and then we'll... This is, you know, this is our opportunity. The funds are available within the town uh, to do this. This is something that needs to happen. Furthermore, it's not only something just related to the African-American population, but the town can 
take it up on its, uh, itself to do a general survey of the population of Amherst in relationship to um, uh, a snapshot of where we are, who we are, what we want, what we desire, et cetera. And that's available to us. And, this, and the, reason, the reason I'm really in th I'm wanting to promote that is that it's not only important to know where uh, the, uh, the um, outlines and to know about African-Americans in, in town, but we also need to be able to uh, take that data and come up with a representative stratified uh, sample of African-Americans that can be tapped into to do surveys on what this population, what our population, what we're thinking about and want, our, our wants and desires on a number of different topics. We can't let this go by. Uh, this amount of money that's available now is not gonna be available again. How about some other comments or questions? And I, I'd like to raise up something that Dr. Shabazz had previously talked about in a meeting um, in relationship to beginning to ask our fellow community members and, 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 and folks that are offering services in the community to do some of this work if they're so willing pro bono. Um, and so that is certainly um, it may not be for this particular uh, arrangement that we're working on here, um, but I would like to be able to have those conversations with these organizations. Um, and it's possible that uh, there may be some partnership there that can happen. Alexis or Hala, would you, uh, how are you feeling about um, moving forward with broadening the scope of work to help us to, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I was just gonna say, um, well, I wasn't gonna say anything because I, I agree with everything that um, Dr. Rosa said. And um, I always feel like, you know, more is more, I guess, in, in, when it comes to information and data. So yeah, I'm all in. Great. Dr. Shabazz, do you have anything more to add to this? Well, I'm just actually, yeah, I think we ought to unpause, let them produce for us what they've, um, what, you know, based upon what we already have kind of specified. I've been looking at the uh, US uh, Census Bureau uh, data for, for Amherst and the ACS data. A lot of it is is actually online and publicly accessible. The real question comes down to, you know, who who can take the time, who's got the time to go and pull up uh, these different layers to, uh, you know, look at the the data, um, you know, within within Amherst, uh, you know, to use the the you know pull in the data. So it sounds like they're doing things that. You know, is there publicly accessible because this is this is public data. Uh, our our tax dollars already paid for it at the federal level, but it's who has the the time, who has the wherewithal, who has the expertise. I uh, have a class that I've had them look at this kind of thing in the past. Uh, I'm not doing it this semester because I'm grad program director, and I um, that particular class was released for me to do other work. But um, but yeah, it's um, you know it's it, it's helpful to get that kind of uh, of work started. Uh, we can archive it in our in our municipal library. We can have uh, you know discussions around it that can you know and and from from Mattia and I and others who who will work on on the harm report, we can certainly go toward um, you know being being uh, uh, giving us. The kind of informed information that we can bring to our our community discussions uh, um, within the within the African American community give us some data uh, to work from. Uh, we can take it, of course, when in in our in our ultimate reporting from A AHRA 
uh, so that, yeah, it's so we can have some data driven um, uh, proposals. And I think that will be uh, will be very important going forward. Absolutely. Um, so if I'm hearing you, Dr. Shabazz, are you uh, saying that ideally what you would like is to have a multi phased scope of work so sort of release that first scope of work maybe we're going to do a couple just i'd like to move some of the hours out of that visualization piece to be honest because i think we can if we can use those hours for something maybe i think some of the visualization is good but a lot of that can be done on our own even potentially so um but we can we can definitely talk more about the details but what i'm hearing you say is you'd like to sort of release that aspect of the work and then um, ask them to create a second phase of the proposal that will deal with the disparity piece that we're wanting to work on for the harm report. Does that sound accurate? Yeah, and let up, let them tell, as I was trying to get them to say, tell us what you think is in the data that's accessible that you can help to, to give us for these questions we have. And then we can then you know, specify where we want them to, to drill down. But yes, for this piece, for where is the population, where does the 2000 plus uh, black African-American Amherst residents live? Give us that. I like the three different layers from the groups to the tracks, um, you know, show us where folks are. Let's get that. That's, a, that's an initial step that can help us in our efforts to know where to canvas, where to door to door knock, where to um, you know be, begin to 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 do a mailing. You know the mailings I learned in the recent campaign cycle. You know you can do a targeted mailing to different yes. households uh, based on these tracks and whatnot. So we can get a postcard out to to different zip codes based upon these visualizations of the of the of the blocks, the areas, the group, the tracks where people are, we can then, you know, get a budget for uh, for a mailing of a postcard to say, you know, will you, you know, to, to, to again, build the census out. So yes, I like what I think is done so far. I don't know that too much more time needs to be put into it from what we, we got a little overview of today. Just give us that so we can begin to run with it. And, and think about things like mailings, like door canvassing and so on. And then yes, let's then talk about a different scope of work for whatever the survey or other resources can tell us about things like black access to internet, to inter black African-American internet access, black African-American income uh, uh, um, levels, black African-American, um, you know, uh, um, housing issues. So whatever they can tell us in some other areas that that uh, we, we we advise them on, then if they say yes, we can get you some things on that. We can talk about a second scope of work. But I like what's been done, uh, uh, and and I'm very you know uh, happy to to go ahead and have them get that part of it done. Yeah, same here. I think we had a, uh, it's on your table. Door. You're ready to roll with it now, uh, and we don't need to change anything. And that there is money available to do this second phase, uh, and and you know so let's roll on. Excellent. Okay. Any opposition to that before we move on? All right. So we'll. I I don't. I think given that we already sort of agreed to that in a previous meeting, we're just having a consensus around that now. I don't think we need to have a motion in order to act on that. So. Um, I do want to say with respect to the harm report, um, we are beginning that work. So Dr. Shabazz and me and Mattia have met. Um, Mattia is actually assembling some other folks uh, who have previously worked on the first research reports that we did. And um, I know Anita Sorrow is in and ready to go. And there are some others. So um, that work will will be started and we will keep the HRA updated as we proceed with that. Any other questions before we move on? Um, Herb, I still see your hand up, but I think it was from before, unless it's not. It definitely was up before. It really got really tired, I had to take it down. 
okay. All right. Um, excellent. So we can move on unless there is anything else um, to be added. Uh, just take one more check. Okay. All right. So let's see, where do we want to go next? We did the Black Census, we did the harm report. Um, let me just get a, a few things out of the way because a couple of these items are going to take some time for us to get through here. So Mass Humanities Grant Link. Um, thank you for adding the link in there, Jennifer. I'm going to attempt to click on that and see if it, I, oh, that worked. That was really good. I'm going to share the screen again um, quickly. So um, I had the opportunity to meet with Brian Boyles, who is the executive director of Mass Humanities. Um, Mass Humanities is responsible for the Frederick Douglass readings, for example. Um, and they have just opened up a new round of grants. And in speaking with Brian, he felt that what we were trying to do with respect to documenting our work, he thought expand Massachusetts stories, which is this one right here, um, would be a good grant program for us to apply for. It's up to $20,000. Um, and they have an explicit mission right now to um, offer grants to um, organizations that are, are, are looking to expand this, literally expand the stories in Massachusetts and are doing racial justice and equity work. Um, so let's go down here. Um, so this would be up to twenty thousand um, dollars. Brian also put me in touch with a filmmaker in Northampton who is a board member of Mass Humanities. I haven't been able to connect with him yet, but he thought that um, speaking with a filmmaker and getting some folks on board, like from um, Amherst Media and bringing Alexis into that, uh, would be a way to one of the challenges with making a documentary that I didn't really know is that finding good filmmakers is really challenging. And especially right now, it's apparently very challenging. <laughs> so any leads we might have um, are going to be good. And so the letter of inquiries opens on February 7th, um, which means we can begin the process essentially. Um, the deadline is April 11th, so we have some time here. What I'd like to be able to do is get started when it opens so that I can bring the application for everyone's review and input and work um, in, a, in, a, in a meeting in the next several weeks um, when, we, when we're meeting again. So any questions about about that or comments or concerns? I'm sorry, when did you say the deadline for that one was? I have, we can begin, the inquiry date is the 7th of February, but what was the end? Um, hang on, it was April 11th. And, um, I think there was also a suggestion to, um, I lost my, hang on one second, there we go. There was also a suggestion to see if there are ways to connect with other communities uh, around this. So that was just another suggestion I think that I spoke with Brian about. All right. Any questions before we move on from that? All right. I, I just Please. will note I spoke with uh, Lawrence Hott, who is a film documentary filmmaker and is on the board of uh, Mass Humanities. I think we just talked uh, yesterday, and I think we have a uh, uh, schedule to talk again on on Friday, and so um, I will be following up with that and let folks know relative to our work what. Uh, um, what may be some connections there, but uh, but yeah, overall, this is uh, 
this is good. I will also note that uh, our colleague here at UMass, uh, Whitney Battle Baptiste, is also on that uh, board as the governor's appointee and can be uh, a resource to us in knowing, you know, better how to how to put together a, a, a good proposals or, or inquiry letters. Excellent. That is a really good point. Yes. And, and the gentleman you spoke to, Larry or Lawrence, that's, that is who I had uh, emailed. So I, I'm glad you're in touch with them. And um, if I can be of any help um, in terms of that, let me know, or Alexis maybe would be even a better person to, to bring in. Can you that. just say his last name again? Because I had more in. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Anything else on that? All right. So let's see here. All right. I'm going to quickly talk about the concept memo for the TC regarding home rule charter. So um, we have been talking over the last few me meetings about the one of the three legal pathways that KP law recommended with respect to distributing reparation funds. And that is creating a home rule petition that would define reparations as a public purpose and would essentially, um, it, would, it would tell, it would message that we in Amherst, if it were approved by the town council and sent to Mindy to take through the process, it would mean that we, we think reparations, distributing reparations benefits is a public purpose. And it would say all of the reasons, um, you know, why and have some sort of general, uh, I, I guess um, it's advised not to be too specific, but also to have enough information in there, but to have it to be somewhat flexible. So the um, advice of Paul and Lynn at this point is that we uh, should create a concept memo um, that will also serve as an educational opportunity for fellow council members. And so I um, have asked for us to be placed on the March 7th town council agenda to present a concept memo that would one, outline and explain the purpose for doing the home rule and beginning that process and would offer us an opportunity to have the ear of council members to begin that educational process. So it'd be twofold. Um, and then the end result ideally would be that the council would support us in moving forward. And it's important to know that even if we start that pathway of the home rule petition, it doesn't mean we can't take the other pathways too. It's just, it's just one of the options. Um, and so I see Alexis's hand is raised. So I'm gonna, Alexis, um, please. Um, I was just wondering if you could be a little bit more specific about what we, can, or so you had said that um, that strategically there are some things that we're supposed to be specific about and maybe more vague or flexible at, about and I guess I'm wondering if you could be more specific about what those things are. Absolutely um, and I asked that question actually when I met with um, KP Law. So um, for example we don't have to, in the home rule, we don't have to be really, really specific about eligibility and about exactly um, what the design of the reparative program will be. Um, so we'll, we can simultaneously continue to do that work and to develop eligibility and criteria, el eligibility criteria and to design the benefits that, um, you know, this body would like to pursue. Um, but we have to sort of have some language in there that says, um, you know, that we, we, we are defining reparations as a public purpose. And for example, we might say, um, and this would be according to NCOBRA, we might talk about um, 
direct benefits that would go to an individual, such as housing assistance, business scholarship, um, you know, things like that, versus community benefits that would be for the, the, the community as a whole, like um, education and celebration and um, markings and, and all of those sorts of things. So that is, we can, I would, I would like us to use the language from NCOBR because I think it's really good the way they describe the benefits, potential benefits. Um, but does that answer your question? Yes, that's very helpful. Thank you. Sure. Um, so I guess the ask that I have right now is um, I would like to begin drafting with the help of Rep Dom, who has a little more information about dates and we'll have to sort of strategically think about when we want to, at this point, any filing would be a late filing um, and we're not guaranteed necessarily a hearing. Um, she's going to find, she's going to look into that for us though. Um, if we weren't going to do a late filing for this session, then we would have until January of 2023 when the new session started to submit it in the new session. Um, I'd like to really understand what the downside of um, a late filing is, if there is a big downside to that. But um, the ask that I have for you tonight is that I would like to begin to draft that concept memo um, for your review at the next meeting, and then to prepare us to do a presentation uh, to the town council on March 7th. Um, so if there aren't any objections to that, we can move on. Or if there are more questions or comments, this would be a great time to ask. As I recall, the representative was saying that there was a downside uh, potentially in terms of trying to do it in this session that, that's closing out. Um, and that she wanted to check also in terms of what the um, uh, certain resources I thought on the state end in terms of the writing. I'm not sure, um, I know you're saying certain things ought to be informed in the petition locally, but I thought there was like a template or something she was saying that might be accessible through the the bill writers, through the the legislative writers, uh, I can't remember exactly how she described it, but there's some resource in Boston uh, on Beacon Hill that uh, she wanted to see. Did you have? Was that a part of uh, your understanding? And have you heard from her on that? Yes. So what she was saying is that she was going to consult with House Counsel. Um, to see what their sort of perspective was on this. And I think what was decided in, or what was discussed at least in the meeting with myself and KP Law is that Mindy and ha House Council would work with town council, with the, the attorney for the town, KP Law, um, in drafting. And, and, and so knowing, for example, and I think we've talked about this before, um, you know, once it gets through town council, um, then it goes to a particular committee. And so um, we have like the chair of the newly formed state committee that's for racial equity um, is chaired by Bud Williams. Am I getting that? Rep Bud Williams in Springfield? Okay. And I actually just watched um, their first meeting that happened, I think last month. And I would recommend that you, I can send the link for everybody to watch that. It was really interesting, but where the bill goes matters, you know, which committee it ends up in matters. And so if there's some way for us to, um, to create le the legislation that allows it to go into a committee that might be more apt to take it up, <laughs> um, then we want to think about those things. So I think that's sort of the the value of of those conversations that you're that you were thinking about, Dr. Shabazz. And and I don't think that um, Rep. Dom has had that opportunity yet because it's been really busy. They're closing out this this session, um, but I know that she will. 
Do you think it would be useful to ask if there is a template of a type of home rule uh, legislation similar to what we're looking at that has recently gone through that could then guide us in the in in in, in the work of of um, framing from this end? Uh, I, I know we could all be done, you know, once we approve what we approve here, but if we could draft something that's closer to the format of what they're used to seeing, maybe it would be, you know, would speed its its reception. Absolutely. And you know what you just reminded me that I had a brief follow up call with Paul after the meeting with KP Law. <laughs> And the, the lawyer, Lauren, had already gone back and discovered that the first sort of home rule that was like the one that we're doing was actually for cannabis legislation. So there's a precedent that has been set. Um, and so she had already pulled together that language as, because um, we certainly don't need to reinvent the wheel, but in some ways we are inventing this thing. <laughs> So we're doing both, you know, um, so we want to pull from what we can um, and we want to and we're also going to be um, we're going to be innovating something in a way. Um, so both. Um, and just to be clear, the concept memo that would be presented to the town council on March 7th, it will not be the language of the bill by any means. It's actually the first step to get the town council um, support in moving forward with this pathway. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that was clear. Yes, Alexis. I was wondering um, strategically, and maybe maybe this is too soon to talk about this, but I guess I was wondering if, is there a special way, maybe not special, but is there a certain way that we should be presenting this to the town council? Like, should we all be there or like, you know, is there a way that we should be doing that strategically? My answer is yes. <laughs> I think that's a good, like in our next meeting, um, because we're not going to have a whole lot of meeting time bef between now and March 7th. I think we need to discuss how what our strategy is for presenting. And in the meantime, what I can do is speak with Lynn. Um, I, I said, I asked Lynn um, when I asked her to put us on on, on the agenda, I said, you know, I, I really want to make sure that we get on there when we have the space and time to really be able to have a discussion with the felt with with the, the council. Um, and so instead of, you know, we, I had, we'd thought about the 28th, but we moved it to the seventh. So I feel ensured that we're going to have a good space and time to make a presentation. Um, and I think it's an opportunity that we have and that we should all be present if we can. And, and, and contribute to that. Any other questions or comments on this? All right, <laughs> good. So moving on then, uh, let's see here. Um, okay, Dr. Shabazz, I just, I, I need to do a quick check-in with you about CPA. Um, we didn't get a chance to touch base today. So I, I just want to check in and see if you are prepared to talk about CPA. Um, I also would like to say that in your packet, I included the CPA report for FY23. So you can see all of the projects that are being recommended and you can see that there's close to $500,000 left for FY23 for late applicants potentially. Um, we did check with the chair of that committee. She explained to us the process, how that would go. Um, and I also included in the packet an example of West Cemetery that the town of Amherst put in a, a CPA proposal that they put in. So you could get an idea and a sense of what that application would need to look like. Um, my main goal is there's almost $500,000 and we haven't gone through a consultative process to the extent that we would like to when FY24 CPA opens, but I don't want us to lose this possibility here in FY23. So I'm gonna uh, open it to you, Dr. Shabazz. Well, and, and I'll just 
open the discussion in a way that you know others can also um you know join in the the education that i think is important is to understand cpa guidelines and to understand what can fit in as far as reparative justice work in the four areas of the community preservation act that is affordable housing historic preservation open space public recreation um under public recreation uh the there, there are groups that i have met with that um really i think it's a question of do should they come before us to present do they transmit the information through me to to present to ahra for its support but there are ideas around public recreation in terms of facilities that uh african heritage people use and would uh would have ideas of how these could be uh improved and could help to preserve um aspects of uh of their involvement in public recreation um open space is a is a is is really a question that um in the black assembly of amherst um massachusetts there have been a number of people really interested and concerned but i tell them that the question of how to use how, how open space can also be used in ways by the black community besides say on walking trails or just looking at it or just knowing that it's preserved for future generations is really you know a a question that i will have to uh will need to dig in deeper with our local cpa group to to understand how on some of this land open space what's the possibility for black farmers to be able to uh, uh, to have a patch to cultivate on who do we address those questions to who can answer what under under open space what are allowable uses that uh, uh, the black community or, or African heritage farmers uh, might uh, uh, be allowed and be able to seek support for with respect of that um, clearly under historic preservation uh, there are ideas some uh, uh, groups are developing their own proposals independently in terms of um, you know uh, families who have uh, lived in in Amherst for for multiple generations and how that history is best preserved and um, and they will at their time uh, bring forth be bringing forth these uh, these proposals um and then also the and and then i do have uh something coming forth on that relative to the scholars uh the scholars walk or the uh, heritage trail acknowledging the many artists and scholars of african heritage that have called amherst home um and uh, finally in the affordable housing area this is again an area that i think um uh, additional um information understanding of what is allowable what is fundable uh uh in the area of affordable housing then uh that i am yet able to to really um you know know what 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 constitutes uh activities under um uh under that uh particular piece so it is um the the i think we can look between um you know before the this month or this this black history month for proposal to look at on the uh historic preservation side it won't be the last one there are others that i say that again groups independent independently plan to bring forth to uh to to ahra and the town council but uh but there is at least one that will come out this uh this black history month but the um, but again, in the other two areas, the other areas, I think there's still some educational things that could really be helpful to guide uh, uh, the proposal writing process in terms of what's allowable. Uh, and maybe others here on this on this body wish to speak to or have ideas about the affordable housing uh, or open space or public recreation areas.
that they've looked into. Thank you, Dr. Shabazz. That was really helpful. Um, any, yeah, following up on what, what Dr. Shabazz said, are there any other comments about, I, I guess I, I um, am curious how the group feels um, based on what Dr. Shabazz just presented <clears throat> that we can move forward and actually begin the process and what supports do we need? What help do we need from um, folks who know how to, to write these applications? If you look at the application that I put in the packet, you'll see um, it's not super technical, um, but it would be, it would certainly be good to have some support in putting it together. Um, so I, I guess I'm just curious what we feel the next sort of action steps should be um, to move to move our process forward. Okay. Well, um, why don't we, Irv? Were you, were you going to add something? No. Okay. Um, so Dr. Shabazz, you and I can touch base offline. I did have a chance to talk with Councillor Lopes today. Um, and so um, Councillor Lopes um, is one of those families that uh, is a member of a family that has been here for um, generations and um, has uh, some ideas with respect to uh, possible CPA projects and would like the AHRA's um, support um, in, in bringing those forward. So um, we can sort of address that again, and then we'll, we'll come back in our next meeting and see if we can sort of put something together. Does that sound good? Okay. <laughs> you say the current list is in our packet, but is, is it also up on the web? Um, the, are you talking about, yeah, the current, I can, it is, it is, it should be, um, actually, you know what, where you can find it is in the town council, um, meeting packet for Monday's meeting. I believe it's in there, but it's also in our packet. <laughs> so let me see so, if I, I just want to show you here, this is Cambridge and how, you know, really easy they make it. So here they have CPA process for fiscal year 22 is complete. They then digest every proposal. You can go right in there and pull up something, you know, like the, 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 bare, the bare root nursery. Um, and, you know, here comes, here it comes. It, it shows you exactly what, how they applied uh, the form, the rationale, the, the, the statement of goals and purposes, the, um, you know, the total project budget. I just like how it lays out there, but you know, but again, that's Cambridge and, and uh, we're Amherst, but, um, but just wanted to show you how, how it's done there. But I, I will investigate the packets and, and see what, um, you know, and, and be able to look at some of the existing ones, especially the West Cemetery one. I'd like to see what, uh, uh, what's already been proposed on West Cemetery. Yeah, that was a really good one. I yeah, that and and there are a couple actually. There's one in our packet, but in the in, in there there were a couple proposals for West Cemetery. I think so. Take a look. Um, okay, good. Anything else on this? All right. So let's uh, hang on one second. Um, just take a quick look. Um, okay, good. We're moving through. So the next um, the next sort of piece of what I'd like to talk about is um, our community en engagement process forthcoming. Um, and this is going to tie into our BAM update this week. So Hollow will be offering um, a BAM update. I am going to just bring something up to share with you all real quick. Um, and this is by no means complete. Um, let's see here. 
<clears throat> but I just wanted to give you a sense of what I've been sort of thinking about as I'm thinking about what our community engagement uh, can look like here. So we'll just quickly look at this. So I have starting here at the top, um, we've got our um, African heritage residents, we have non-Black residents, we have our elected officials and all of those categories, our town departments, our town committees, our PACs, which are our political action committees. Um, and this is, again, it's not exhaustive. Um, we have the economic development organizations, our media, our anchor institutions, including reaching students, staff and faculty and alumni. We have our family, community and civic organizations, um, our grassroots activism, activist organizations, independent schools, faith organizations and groups, neighborhood associations, um, so these are, this is my, everything coming out of my, my brain that I could think of um, that we would need, to, that we would want to touch in this process. And so the question is, how are we going to do it? <laughs> um, and so some ideas here, we have town hall meetings, community forums, educational symposiums and presentations, listening sessions um, that certainly I would envision um, being community led and facilitated. Um, and Evanston has done a really nice job with that. I can share their model. Um, and then organized social events, um, community, the black community having social events, organized social events. Um, so these are some of the ways I am gonna place that. I'm gonna send this to you all. And I would love actually, I'm, I, I don't know, no, I guess. I think if I've already spoken about it, we might be able to add to it. I'm going to have to find out. Jennifer, do you know if I, can I make this a shared document that can be added to? Probably not, right? You're muted. It just needs to be added to the packet. Okay, for, for this past week. Okay, great. For this, yeah, no, it needs to be added to tonight's packet. Right. <laughs> so, okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, Alexis. Um, I was just going to say, um, but I will add it to, um, we, we do reach, um, 6,500, um, so, you know, the cable subscribers in Amherst through Amherst media. So that's one way we can get onto TV. We also have mm -hmm. an in at Valley free radio. Um, I also have a personal connection at, um, 106.3 WEIB, um, and that is a station that is often listened to by um, our community. So, what was that? Would you say that one more time? So, uh, there was um, Valley Free Radio. Okay. And then um, the next one, and I think that's WHMP or something. Um, and then the next one. No, oh, WHMP is different. Oh, okay. I'm wrong then. Valley Free Radio, that's one. And then um, -E and, -E and then 106.3 WEIB. Which w is for my phone. WEIB. IB. Thank you. Okay, great. Oops. Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I also, I was so like last, like right as you were ending talking about the CPA grant, um, I had a really small question. So uh, is, is, are all of these, do all of them have to be completed within three years? Um, the CPA projects? Yeah. I don't know. That's an excellent question. Do you have an answer for that? Um, Jennifer or Dr. Shabazz? Anybody really? Well, I learned of one concerning our historic black church that's uh, that's uh, hasn't even started, and it's two year, almost two years since they were approved for the funding. So I think they do like to see it happen within a, a frame of time. But uh, again, if there are problems, I suppose they 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 can grant some latitude. So uh, is that the debt project get underway? Never got underway. Is it underway now, uh, Heather? Um. We're working on it. The pandemic really put a, and then the price of labor, um, lumber, but yeah, 
Yeah, I, I, what I mean is, has it has it uh, cleared all the hurdles in relationship to the town? Has the town? Uh, I heard the solution to the W nine issue is 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 at hand. Is that right, Hala? Yes, we just had a meeting actually Monday, so we're we're moving forward. Oh yes, yeah. <laughs> That's great. I'm really glad to hear that. Yeah. Um, so this, um, so so what I what I what I'd like to do is to take this uh, who and how, and then for us to be able to develop a budget um, that that we will require to do this um, and a timeline and how this is going to get done. Um, so I'm going to open the floor to Hala because, um, and just to give a little background, this is um, sort of part of the BAM update. Um, BAM met last week and uh, discussed, they have a, a specific proposal with respect to community engagement. Um, and I think that it would behoove us to uh, have that proposal be part, if possible, of a larger community engagement proposal um, request to the town manager. And Herb, I see your hand is up. I don't, I didn't see in your, uh, in your presentation just now, the downtown Amherst Foundation. Okay, thank you. So I have the chamber, the bid, should I put that under under this here, the right here? I mean, I, yeah, I mean, it doesn't fit, fit neatly, but it, it it's fine. Put it down. It's me. <laughs> it's, it's really, yeah. It's its own line. Gets its own line. <laughs> yeah. Any other shout outs of what might I, I, and please look at this once it's added to the packet and, and, and think about it and add to it. And this is a, a working document for sure. But if I've missed anything, just right, you know, right out the gate here. Um, I think there is a black business organization that's that's re reorganizing and uh, I'll, I'll try to get you the info on that. Great, that would be great. Um, I think that there are probably family community and civic organizations that aren't on here that need to be added. There were some that were located in Hadley or sort of in the surrounding community that I didn't add. Youth uh, Action Coalition, which was around for 17 years, but during the pandemic and before the pandemic kind of uh, um, went Youth Action Coalition is, uh, oh, it's Sunrise. I'm gonna add, um, as you're talking Youth Action Coalition. Yeah, yeah but they're they're being re, re, uh, revived as well coming out of the pandemic. Excellent, okay. Any other youth, uh, yeah, youth, any other youth organizations? In the high school there, for example, there's POKU, I don't know. Uh, you might just want to just say high, the high school itself, uh, Amherst Regional High School, but um, but within it there are groups like uh, the MSAN Minority Student Achievement Network. There's there's POKU, but again, I wouldn't necessarily. Yeah, I just would generalize it under a uh, Amherst Regional High School groups. Excellent, Irv. Yeah, I I. Um... There, within the with obviously within, within the school, um, Amherst Public Schools, there's a social equity action group, whatever, SEAC. Um, that e S E A C. Right. Okay. There's also CPAC. And CPAC. S E P A C. CPAC, what S? What is special that? ed, special oh, ed. Oh, S E. Okay, P A C. Okay. Parent <laughs> advisory committee. I had my mind on CPA still. Okay. <laughs> um, Hala. I had my hand up for the um, Martin Luther King Breakfast Committee. They've been around for forty years and have quite a base. It um, lives. It, it would be down. We're we're doing CPR to it right now. <laughs> um, under the family, community, and civic organizations. Perfect. Okay, so it's the Martin Luther King Breakfast. I should, yeah, I always want to put the doctor in there because you're I, yeah. But yeah, Dr. Martin Luther King Breakfast Committee. 
one of the people involved with that are one of the people I uh, we're looking to honor in our walk, and that's Mary Wyatt. Yes, I, that's awesome. Oh, sorry, Halla. <laughs> Um, do you see anything that stands out that is missed here right now? I'm not sure about CRAN uh, and the status of CRAN. I'll have to check in with Ash Hartwell, um, but that's the uh, uh, Race Amity Now. Yes, that is. Yeah, they did. They did a program last year, so I think that's a good one. C-R-A-N, CRAN. Is it C-R-A-N? Okay. All right, so we can continue to add to this, um, but uh, we have our work cut out for us. <laughs> so we have a lot of work to do. Um, so between now and the next meeting, I'm gonna try to get this a little bit more organized in terms of how we can, um, like for example, which of these are we gonna um, sort of blanket outreach through um, a community forum or through an educational program? Which of these groups do we maybe need to do a little more um, sort of individual contact with? Um, so I'll try to strategize a little bit more around all of that. Um, but for now, I'd like to open it up to Hala um, to give the BAM update and I'm gonna take this down. Thank you. The BAM update definitely ties well into the community engagement. We tie more into the African heritage, black identified um, residents of Amherst as we're looking to engage with and connect with census. So an idea that we voted on and feel really excited about is to in a, prioritize a black owned business in Amherst and over 12 weeks, have 50 people invited or welcome to come in, eat, talk. We share information, they share information. It's a dialogue. It's kind of how we do it. it, it um, it's a chance to really get feedback because we learned from Evanston that some people were like, hey, we didn't get to get our voices raised. And we know this is one way that we come together, build community even start to figure out different ways to repair harm. So that would be 12 weeks, 50 people a week. Um, you said not to talk about budget yet because we're gonna do the big, big budget, um, but we have that in mind. We're happy to support a black owned business. Um, I could go, there was some pushback about that and I don't wanna, I know we're running late, but it sort of parallels right now when President Biden says I'm intentionally choosing, you know, a black, a qualified black woman to nominate for Supreme Court. And um, it's not to put any disrespect to the other businesses, but since the, the seizing of this country that we now call this uh, United States of America, it used to be written in, you know, European descended white property owning male, very clearly in the law. So over all these hundred years, it's just become known and part of normative. So we have to start naming the sociocultural groups and marginalized peoples that have pushed out of these um, places and tables and opportunities. And it's not gonna feel good sometimes, but I think it's really important to start naming the people that have been excluded. And so when we say a black owned business in Amherst, it's to support that part of that. I just superimpose that on there, but that's part of why it's really important also because um, it's been a history not to be at that table. So. I think I just ran over a whole bunch of stuff. Did I include everything I needed to include? Did I miss something? I see some hands. <laughs> Dr. Rhodes, Dr. Shabazz. You know, I, I, I guess, you know, uh, you know, supporting black owned businesses is obviously a really great thing. I guess I, guess I want to emphasize business uh, and that is black owned is one thing, but it's still in business, which, and that business needs the support of the entire community not just African-Americans. In order for any business to succeed in this town, you need all. Absolutely. Thank you, and Alexis? Oh, um, I'm sorry, I raised my hand before I formulated my thought fully, um, but I am, I, I have a strong belief that 
when you cater to the most marginalized, you're actually creating a an inclusive environment for everyone in the end anyways. So I think that um, centering those who have been pushed so far from the center, I think that that actually ends up benefiting everyone anyways. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I, was, I didn't say that very eloquently, but. You absolutely did. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what the pause is on on speaking to the budget if we're going to to raise no our support. No, no, I'm sorry. I want to make sure I that was clear. So um, it sounds like BAM has a budget in mind for that. What I had said to Hala is um, about like, do do we want to strategically look at a full community engagement budget that we're going to need? Oh, OK. Okay. go to Paul and say, we need X amount of money for our community engagement and uh, educational process. And then we have within that the control of how it's getting, you know, what we're doing and, and how we're distributing it. Or do we want to go one by one? You know, my, my inclination would be to try to have a budget that sort of handles, if not all, most of what we're trying to do. Um, but yes, Hala, please do share the details with that of that if that's if okay. if yeah. Excellent. We we are asking for fifteen thousand dollars, and that is for twelve weeks of paying for people making the food, the food, and the rental of the space, which to me is an amazing price, and we're blessed that we found a person to work with us with that price. <laughs> Hala, do you have a? Is there a space in mind that you're talking about? Yes. And <laughs> um, um, the full name of it, I, I'm, I don't want to butcher the name. Um, Shabazz, can you, I know it's Hazel's something. Yes, that's all Hazel. Oh, I'm, and I'm happy I, to I say, there was a, okay. <laughs> I'm happy to say my, the word is, I just learned that the town of Amherst has certified them to open. It, uh, it <laughs> just, we're, we're talking about the Blue Lagoon there. Yeah. Yeah, it's so right in the center the night, of town. Yep. That's the nightclub part, but the the dinner part, the dining part, is 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 Hazel's, and uh, it just was approved today. The last hurdles have been have been uh, so yeah. So we're it's, very excited. It's accessible by the bus route. Every bus route goes right to the center of town, so that made it also something that felt really more accessible. Right. It'll take time to get launched on this because we've got to think about with respect to the outreach strategy you're you're raising madam chair that um you know uh, as well as the inst the information from donahue institute how do we begin to canvas and get people we're not interested in the same 50 people coming every week over and over again for a free meal we're 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 trying to have targeted invites different constituencies different parts of the community through, so, so there is time to kind of think about the outreach strategy behind this, and uh, and then move to to get this launched. But but if we can, you know, get the get the budget piece approved, and um, you know, and, and then begin to work with the uh, uh, the restaurant to uh, to start, you know, pigeonholing dates, uh, you know, when they can accommodate us for a couple of hours to come out, set up, bring our information out, set up the tables um, and, um, you know, and then have people come in, um, sit down, have the exchange of information, get the ideas from, from folks, and then, um, you know, sign up our, our mailing list, our email list, what have you, if they're so willing, and then, um, you know, uh, take their meal with them or, or eat it, eat it on site. And then, um, you know, and then, on to the next week, next group. But uh, but yes, all of those, all of the things in the outreach strategy has been laid out. How to you know tap into as we start this process, the radio stations, Amherst Media to put up a, a bulletin item for the 6,500 viewers there to see, and um, you know, and ultimately we're we're uh, moving through the African American community. But as we get that piece underway and going and start to get the ideas generated from this. This, 
this can be ramped up and expanded and held in other places as well, not just in the same venue when we start trying to reach out to the larger community to, to, to have these dialogues and to have these conversations. You know, we can reach out and have something on the, for example, on the various campuses, something at Amherst College, something at UMass, something at Hampshire, to tap those, those communities, particularly those populations that are, that are really resident uh, year round and, and, and what their uh, concerns are and, and, and how they're engaged. You know, we can move this around. So I see it as, a, as an iterative process. I see it as a process that, ramp, that starts here but then ramps up and utilizes and touches all of those kinds of constituencies uh, you've been you've been laying out. I would make a note, by the way. I I'm on air uh, on Friday on uh, Valley Free Radio, um, the Occupy the Airwaves show uh, on Friday with Imakan Sudan and Bruce Feldman and uh, 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 Linda uh, Zegaban and and others um, speaking about Black History Month, speaking about Amherst. Massachusetts and Black history. So, you know, the, the, uh, the, all of those channels are, are very, very important to, to, to strategize, to think about how do we get our word out through, but, but to start launching this um, reparations repast, this, this kind of chat and chew uh, to, to collect ideas, to get people engaged in the process. I think this is a start, but it scales up and, and grows from here. So, uh, yeah. so um, uh, my assumption is that, that you're coordinating this with the uh, with Hazels. Is that is that correct? I can now now that they're approved. Before then, I'm like, we, I yeah, got to think yeah, of a plan I mean, B. Shabazz is that you know, Hazels is uh, is some is is on board with your idea of doing this. Etc. And it's, it's going to be integrated into their uh, business concept. Well, you know, I don't know about it as a con. I think it's just business for them. So, you know, a slow night when they can give us two hours. This doesn't define their business. This isn't like okay, now they're they're the reparations dinner space, and and the only people who can come here are people who are coming to to eat and talk about reparations. No, this this doesn't affect their business model, or this is just two hours once a week on a slow night or whatever no, no, that, they no, give us, that we I, rent I, some space. Yeah, well, what I'm saying is that I, 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 what I'm wanting to know is, have you discussed this with them, gone through with a plan for it, uh, et cetera? Because it's, 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 you know, this is something that's not only good for them, it's good for the community, but also, hey, Man, you know, if you've ever been in terms of starting up a restaurant, this is no joke. And it, this is serious stuff. So they have to integrate this all into what they're doing because it's this is foot meets the pavement. And it is really difficult. And I do know what has been going on in the background in terms of how they have uh, come about getting uh, just getting just getting ready to open. Uh, and so they've, they've gone through a mighty struggle. And so I guess what I'm saying is, and advocating for is that they are talked to, it's integrated into their plan, et cetera. One other thing, and I like the concept, the uh, Downtown Amherst Foundation uh, is going to be opening a, a performance space uh, that's called the Drake. Uh, and obviously that's, that's a space where this kind of thing can take place there also. Uh, and the third thing is is budget and where this money is going to come from. My assumption is if we're talking about money coming from the town, uh, it really should come from our part of money that's already been set aside. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow. Well, that is all really exciting and um, and so uh, thank you, Hala, for reporting that back and for Dr. Shabazz and expanding that. And um, I just will make, I just wanna make one comment with respect to 
um, supporting black owned businesses in Amherst. Um, and I'm embarrassed to say that I'm not familiar with every black owned restaurant if there are others. Um, and just curious if this group knows if there are other black owned restaurants or other black owned spaces that we can begin to um, consider as well in addition to this um, to this so it doesn't have to be answered now but I just put that out there the only other restaurant I know of is Mission Cantina but that says something The only one that that's something it's right, Jennifer. Exactly. Go ahead, Doctor. One that you know about in what context? What's the that? only other black-owned restaurant in Amherst that I know about right now is Mission Cantina. Okay. There's also the um, the spot that used to be White Hut, right? I they, don't know. The they name. closed. I think they uh, closed. Uh, yeah, I think that closed. Yep. They know where White Hut is, is where it used to be, it used to be Buffalo Bills. And so in there now is the, the people who own the, what are those drinks? The yeah. tea, honey, oh, bubble tea? Yeah, it's, honey. The, it's the chicken place, right? It's the chicken place on the other side. Well, uh, just something to, to that we'll keep in mind and, and maybe in, there might be other creative things that we're not even thinking of black owned, um, something or other that we're not thinking about right now. So, um, I mean, I know there's like the jewelry store. I think there's the gentleman that owns, or is it an antique shop in the center of town? Oh yeah. Jane Austen, uh, that, that, that is absolutely, yep. You mean Mr. Green's typewriter shop? Yep. Exactly the typewriter shop. Yep. And also the the um the two um the barber and the other the braiding place that's over by El Comolito in front there. Global cuts. Global cuts, yeah. Global cuts and uh what is that called? The big hair no hair um can't think of it at the top of my head. Yasmin is the Yasmin, owner, though. Yes. Because <laughs> we could, you know, we could do, we could go on the road, you know, and have little pop ups that happen at these various locations just to lift them up, you know, like maybe Hazel's is the hub, and then we have these other um, pop up type of um events but we'll we can get more into that we might get too excited right now <laughs> um no no alexis please you you go <laughs> well i was gonna say that if we have some like if we have like printed materials i'm sure that like kayam and then like the, i'm i'm sure that they wouldn't mind just having them there mm -hmm. um yeah that's a good call yeah all right um so I wanted to just make sure that we, um, I know everybody's calendars are getting quite busy um, before, let me just check the agenda real quick. Uh, so we've gotten through everything. Um, I would like to open it up for public comment again. Um, I don't need to read the statement again because we have the same um, attendees. So um, I will not read it, but I will say if, uh, the person in attendance would like to speak or be heard or have public comment, um, please raise your hand. Okay, so not seeing any public comment and uh, what I want to make sure that we get through is figuring out our next meeting date or date, date or dates before we, before we wrap up, um, because I think that people's schedules are starting to get really busy. <laughs> I'm going to call Yvonne tomorrow and, and try to, to reach her to see um, what her schedule looks like. Uh, but is this day and time working for people for the most part 
on a biweekly basis? Or do you um, have you know, any idea? Th yeah, th uh, Thursday happens to be the day when, when most meetings are taking place. I mean, for instance, I um, was in another meeting right before this one and had to get off because it was, you know, was interfering with this. When I look at my calendar, the Thursday dates, there are, you know, there, it's, uh, it wipes me out. There's no way I could do, I mean, JCPC uh, is, is starting to meet on, um, on, on, on Thursdays uh, starting the 10th. Of the 10th? Of which 10th the of February. And okay. it's every and it's every Thursday after that. And now and uh, and that's you know that's that's only one. It's, it's from five to six. And okay. And on the uh, and on also on the tenth, there's also the four towns meeting. So yeah. anyway, it's, Thursdays are really uh, problematic for me. And then once a month, there's uh, a couple other meetings that come up. So anyway. Is Thursdays are problematic for me. How about the 17th? If we can get, can we get the 17th Thursday, two weeks from now? And then, and then from there, we can um, try to see if we need to, because I, I will have a couple Thursdays coming up as well, where I'm not going to be available to meet. So uh, give me a thumbs up if the 17th at 630 works. Not for me. Doesn't Irv? What time does any time work for you on the seventeenth? You know, again, JCPC meets from five to six, and and then on that same day, the uh, Social and Equity Action Group uh, Coalition at the um, or the schools they meet at six thirty. Oh, okay, on the seventeenth. On the seventeenth. Okay. Jennifer, what, generally speaking, um, what are Tuesday nights like for you, like Tuesday the 15th? No, uh, Tuesdays are free for me. Free. Alexis, I'm sorry, I didn't see your hand. Go ahead. It's all good. I was just going to be the bearer of bad news. Um, I have to, uh, I, I run almost every meet, so... Mondays, I run the town council. On Tuesdays, I run the school council or the regional school, I mean, the school committee or the regional school committee. And then on Wednesdays, I run the planning board. Um, so I pretty much attend every meeting starting at either 6 or 6.30. Um, wow. So Thursday is my good day, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna say let's stick with the 17th for our next meeting. And Irv, I'm sorry um, that you won't be able yep. to be here for that one. Um, and and we will, uh, you know, what I'll do is I'm gonna send out an email to everybody with like the next eight possible Thursdays, and you could just reply to me and say that you can do these, the ones you can do, and the ones you can't, and then we'll try to figure it out from there. Also, Michelle, would you? What is the uh, date that the uh, you're going to be going to the council? Yes, thank you. That's Monday, um, March seventh, and um, I will have more details as we approach that date in terms of timing that I'll be able to share with everybody um, who will want to be there and and part of that presentation. So, when did it usually start? So I can just put it in my calendar. Yeah, uh, six thirty. All right, thank can you. You just let me, well, can we just, maybe, I don't know if people know now, but I'll have to post a meeting for that if every if there's gonna be more than a quorum at, attend that, so. Good call. If you know ahead of time that you'll be attending, that would be great. I'm definitely gonna be there. Is everyone if bearing schedules gonna try to be there at that meeting? Okay. So I say we we should probably let me talk with Lynn tomorrow, um, Jennifer. But it probably makes sense just to post it um, and and get it out there. Um, so yeah. Okay. All right. 
So um, I had one quick announcement. I just, I wanted to share that I had the opportunity to present at Applewood on Saturday morning. Um, and Applewood is, if you don't know, it's um, like a, an adult living, I'm, maybe I'm not calling it the right thing. Uh, there's a certain name for how it's described, but it's a community over by Atkins. Um, and um, it was a really, really successful presentation. Um, there were almost 50 residents. Um, they were, I, I couldn't identify people for them, but they appeared to be mostly white people, if not all. Um, and I gave a presentation that I'd like, I'd love to send to you all so you can look at it. It, it basically um, gives some history on, um, field orders number 15 and the 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 withdrawal of that and then um it talks about i'm sorry my brain my brain oh, michelle like i something happened and i couldn't hear you what did you say oh. <laughs> i said that i i spoke at applewood on saturday morning um i gave a presentation um and talked about what sort of uh, has happened since emancipation all the way up to now and helped, uh, I think it was just a really great conversation. And I, and I left the, um, the dialogue at the end with a question. I asked folks to reflect on what their greatest hope and their greatest fear for a reparations program in Amherst was. And it was really interesting to hear um, what people had to say. Um, and I think it really helped um, sort of, uh, I was awakened after I wrote a column for the Amherst Current about making a case for local reparations. Um, there weren't any public comments. Nobody commented on it publicly at all. Um, and yet I had emails, texts, calls about the piece with really, really thoughtful feedback. And so it just got me thinking that people are, um, particularly white people are really uh, nervous to talk about this. And um, so wanting to find ways to sort of break the ice around the conversation by opening with some questions uh, for reflection. Um, so I, I just, I thought it, it went really well and just wanted to share that with you all. So um, I think that, let me just take a look. I didn't anticipate, uh, I did not anticipate anything. Um, are there any other questions or comments or, or member reports? Um, I, I heard you say, Dr. Shabazz, you're going to be on the radio, I didn't hear a time. You know, I'll um, I'll try to. I know I must have it. It's uh, actually we record. I take that back. We record. I think this Friday, and I'll have to and I'll relay the time when it airs. But uh, it, it's it's not a live moment. It's it's recorded and then they broadcast. I believe. Okay, and maybe we can add that onto our um, resources once it's completed. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Member reports? Um, and Alexis, I'm gonna get back to you on your email just so you know about the documentary stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, well, thank you. So I'm gonna um, end this meeting at 8.07 PM. <laughs> and have a great night, everybody, and see you in a couple weeks. Bye. Yeah, WXOJ is, and it's 103.3 FM in Northampton. Mm, Dr. Schwartz, everybody's left. I would send her an email to the group. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just talking. I didn't even know I was still on screen. You're still on. I'm uh, here. Listen, All right. So yeah. you know this, this, uh, can you this hold, guy? can you wait, can you hold a second? Okay. <laughs>